I'd say whooping cough has devastated our family, that it seems to have just come out of nowhere and we had a very healthy, beautiful little baby for four weeks and then after five days in hospital we had a dead daughter and for us it was, it has been a journey of shock about what this disease can do. We saw the, the ferocity of the cough, how violent it was, how every part of her body was shuddering with it. That's when we started thinking, well, why don't people know that this is what something called a whooping cough can actually do? Why don't people know how vaccination works? Why don't adults know that they need a booster? You cough and cough so much with full-blown whooping cough that you basically can't catch your breath. And that's the hoops that are, huh! you know, because you have to catch your breath at the end of so much coughing. And, and in fact, adults can cough so much that they can fracture a rib. And of course, children can cough so much that their blood vessels in their eyes burst. But what we're really worried about is the, the tiny babies who are too young to be immunised. She's born perfectly healthy, full term. Um, we, we brought her home and she was a very healthy little baby, feeding well. Um, putting on weight. Putting on weight. And I think the most heartbreaking thing for us has been that it is easily preventable and we never got that chance to protect her. Huh? Any wise words for your third born? Don't date till you're 30. <laughs> The best protection against whooping cough remains being vaccinated and even though the vaccine isn't perfect, um, it certainly prevents severe disease and of course severe disease is what we're most keen to avoid. The first dose is a two months, although it's recently been recommended that you can bring that back to six weeks to get in as early as possible, then it's four months. Then at six months. Now that arm goes behind you there. The next dose has been at four years of age and we've recently recommended bring that back to three and a half because we've been seeing more children getting whooping cough in that kind of three year age group. And then the next time you, you get the vaccine currently is as a teenager, um, somewhere between the ages of 11 and about 15, depending on which state you're in. No matter what happens, you get the illness, you get the vaccine, it can wane and you can be susceptible again. Tell me about the thinking around immunising pregnant mothers. There's been interest in this for a long time and just of more recent times, I guess, with the new vaccines which are associated with, you know, fairly minimal side effects um, and we've been recommending adults be immunised, um, it was a fairly natural step to look again at the possibility that if you could give the vaccine to mothers just before the baby was born, the baby would have high levels of antibodies from the mother and would be protected in that vital sort of month or two where when we get deaths, that's when we're getting them. We're getting them in those really young babies before two months of age. We don't have, you know, information from 100,000 women um, or even from 1,000 women uh, to definitely show that it prevents your baby dying of whooping cough, but we certainly have strong reasons to suspect that, you know, if you're uh, born to a mother with high antibody levels and you've had high antibody levels passed on to you um, from your mother that you will be protected at least for a couple of months and I guess until you can get that vital first or second dose of the uh, childhood vaccine in. <laughs> I had two very excited older siblings and a loving family around her. We do not know how she caught it and it, you know, haunts us on a daily basis. Unfortunately, whooping cough and all the issues related to it are something we were not aware of until she died. With whooping cough, there's this, these sort of three classic phases. There's what's called the catarrhal phase, which is where it's basically like a cold. Um, and then at some point that moves into the start of a cough and, and then the cough gets progressively worse. And the reason you know it's whooping cough is because it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And, and uh, if you have something like asthma as well or some other chest trouble, you can potentially be coughing for months and months. If it starts like any other sniffle, then how do you identify it? Well, you can't um, at the beginning, but 
what should, I guess, raise your suspicion is if you know that there's a lot of whooping cough around, particularly if you know you've been in contact with someone who has a cough, and particularly if you're the parent of a very young baby, then even very minimal symptoms um, would be enough to get tested and be concerned. But normally, of course, um, you can't really tell until you get something which is a bit more obvious. We've discovered particularly um, adults uh, can actually be carrying the whooping cough bug and never get a cough. If you want to protect your baby and thinking particularly of, of young babies, what you can do at the moment is um, ensure your baby gets uh, their first dose of vaccine as soon as possible, so that's six weeks, and ensure that they get their next doses uh, on time. Um, and ensure that you as the mother, the father, if you're visiting the grandparents and if you're having babysitters or other people in close contact with the child, the best thing you can do at the moment to protect them is to ensure that you and all the other people in close contact are also immunised.